to your mind, mm -hmm. what is the role of the teacher in the classroom? I've been in the shoes of a teacher, um, and I, I try to be in the shoes of teachers every day. And I do think if I'm thinking about learning in the past or learning in the future or learning in the present, that there are some things that hold true and that are timeless. Mm -hmm. And one of those things I do think is that the best teachers are facilitators of learning. What does that mean to you, facilitation? I or think, facilitators of learning? Because I, I think it means that they are um, driven by questions and they're as curious about learning who the people in their classroom are and what makes them tick as they are about the content they teach or the standards that they're held to or that their kids are held accountable for um, or what's going to be on the spring assessment, right? I think that really what drives them and what gets them up in the morning is that they are genuinely curious about the people in their classroom hmm. and um, and what it means to prepare those people, regardless of their age or ability or background, for you know college and career. Um, and again, whatever college and career means to those people in that room. So, um, but I do think that's something that I think the best teachers of the past um, were curious and were relationship builders and were facilitators um, versus kind of dictators of learning. And and I think the the great practitioners that I see in the present and hopefully in the future will be will be that way as well. I do mm -hmm. think there's still very much a need for for teachers. Um, <laughs> whether whether kids are learning in online spaces or in blended spaces or um, you know in schools where they're really driving the projects and the questions and you know the kids themselves are really you know in the most student centered school I still think there's a huge need for teachers um, mm -hmm. because I would argue that in the most student centered school there's some really masterful facilitation and teacher student relationship um, that's largely invisible but that's been created to allow that to happen right so kids feel safe kids feel like they can ask questions um, kids are eager and passionate about learning because that relationship and some of those foundations have been set and because they see their teacher as this facilitator who is genuinely curious about them as a person and also genu genuinely vested in them as a learner and in their future. Um, so you talked a little bit about, you know, sort of these uh, these very curious teachers and, and sort of invested in their, in their kids. Um, and I think there's this hint that um, you don't always see that, right? Like that there is this alternative model, mm -hmm. and you sort of framed it as facilitation versus di dictatorship. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a very interesting juxtaposition. So let's say that someone who sort of is a uh, a, a teacher in um, in a non-facilitative model. Mm -hmm. What is it that you would either say to them, or how would you support them into sort of uh, assuming a more facilitative stance? Um, well, I really think, I mean, we all we all know those practitioners, right? And I think we've, I can think back in my own schooling career. Right, I think many I of us have those, been those yes, practitioners. We've been those practitioners or we were students in the room um, of teachers that were a little bit, that were probably like very knowledgeable, right? And probably, and likely content experts and, um, and I guess, you know, what would I say to them? I think, I don't know. I think I would ask them why they teach. Mm. Why they teach or why they teach that way? I think just why they teach. Mm. Um, and I think I would ask that question because I think digging into why they teach, you know, if, if you teach because you have a deep, passionate love for literature, which mm -hmm. I do, right, yeah. um, by the way, right? But, um, and, and really like your, what gets you up in the morning is passing on that great love of literature or scientific theory or problem solving in math or history of World War II, like whatever it is that kind of gets you up in the morning, um, I think that would, would just kind of cause some reflection and some maybe hopefully disruption in the teacher's kind of head around, huh, so that's why I teach. Why do students learn, right? And, and if they just ask themselves that question and ask the kids in their room that question, um, you know, likely they would probably get responses like, 
not necessarily a huge love for literature um, is widespread across their classroom amongst every kid that they touch, right? So what is it that gets that student um, kind of in their classroom for those 50 minutes a day or 90 minutes a day or however long it is? And, and, and are they maximizing um, the potential of that interaction? Mm. Um, if they, if they, if it's kind of we're blindly kind of teaching in a vacuum of our passion area, is that really opening ourselves up to all the potential passion areas that our kids bring to the table? Mm. Um, so I just wonder if kind of tapping into, you know, what is it that made you choose this path? Um, it likely, certainly, you know, wasn't the awesome paycheck. Um, <laughs> so like, you know, why, why did you land in this education space? And um, if you see, you know, do you hope that the kids that you teach that some of them will become educators? And mm. if so, like, why would they? What is it that you're doing in your classroom that would make this profession really attractive to them? And so starting with this place of reflection and sort of thinking about um, that role of being a reflective practitioner, mm -hmm. do you feel like that is also a part of the sort of the role in the classroom? Absolutely. Um, I think if we did nothing, <laughs> if, there, if we did nothing in our system but really had like this amazing way to hold space and almost assess. I don't know how you assess reflection, right? Because it's sort of this nebulous thing that teachers just kind of naturally do, likely maybe in their head, not even, you know, verbally, um, or verbally or yeah, or in writing. Um, but if we did nothing but just sort of, I don't know, somehow system wide, if we could enforce kind of reflection as just a part of our um, day, I think that we would see amazing student learning gains. Mm. Um, I really just think like the ability to process however a practitioner processes, whether that's with a colleague or whether that's um, with a glass of wine or whether that's <laughs> in the shower, you know, before they head out for the day. Um, I think it's huge. Mm. And I think, you know, um, you know, and tell our all of our students really are reflecting that they're actively learning and inspired to learn and learning in ways and on trajectories and um, at appropriate rates and paces that will allow them to be competitive regardless of what they choose, then we have more reflection to do, right? And we just know that we currently have a gap between um, what our kids are potential, you know, our, the potential that we have in our students and, and sort of the the current data state and bridging those two things, I think there's just a huge opportunity for reflection. And, and if we just kind of allow practitioners to do that in a risk-free risk way and say like, how are you gonna get better than yesterday? You know, how is tomorrow's lessons gonna be better than yesterday? How is next quarter's unit gonna be better than um, when you taught this last year? I think we would see a huge change. And, and I really think that that's kind of one of the tenets of um, National Board Certification, and so, and that's why I think too that also I believe every student deserves access to a board certified teacher, and whether mm -hmm. that means they're board certified on paper or they have a, the mentality of living the five core propositions of being a, a reflective practitioner, I think that they don't they don't necessarily have to have comma NBCT after their name, right? Right. But if that was right, kind of system wide in our um, in our schools, that level of reflection and that expectation of reflection. I think we'd see huge student learning gains because I do believe we have the internal expertise to, to bridge that gap. Um, it's just a matter of are we creating time and space and really encouraging risk-free reflection, you know, allowing teachers to say, wow, that really didn't go well. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to have to do something different. Yeah, so the facilitation and the reflection are, are sort of the, the roles that, that you would see. Yes. Well, I'd love to, to ask sort of what your questions are. Sure. Um, you know, what is uh, your who is question that you would send out to the system or, or, or even just to me? So I think um, one of the keeping me up at night questions is just what does equity actualized look like? Um, and I know it's similar to one of your questions around the barriers of equity, but I really, I really want to know, like, how will we know when we're getting closer to an equitable education for all students? Um, well, your phrasing of the question is really interesting to me. Um, what does equity actualized? Yeah. Right? Not what does actualizing equity or like a process look like, but what is that final state mm -hmm. of actualized 
equity. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think the the sort of the implication is that there is a North Star with equity and, and sort of like a, a vision for, for or could be a vision for what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And so what does asking that question help you to think about? Well, I think I asked that question because I know so many people across our system are grappling with equity in general, and we're doing a lot of thoughtful work um, and inquiry about equity, and we know we know there are barriers and we know there are gaps, right? And I yeah. need only drive, um, I live in the southeast um, quadrant of Aurora, um, and I need only drive you know, north and east to see a very different Aurora um, in every way. So yeah, sure. Economically, and yeah. So um, I need only visit, right, a, an elementary school in each learning community to see very different education experiences um, provided for, for students. Um, and so I ask that question because, again, I think it's it's because I want to I want to be part of actualizing it, um, and I think you know if if that was our north star, if that was everybody's question, um, you know what other social justice problems might we solve mm. through K twelve education, right? Because I think that question lends itself to you know, questions about institutional racism and questions about social justice that are bigger than education, mm -hmm. but that are very much present in our community, that is Aurora, right, Colorado, as well as our nation, our national community, and just kind of our identity as a people. So um, I just think it's, it's kind of, and it's also one of the, the cruelest ironies, I think, of public education is that um, I think so many of us work in public ed education because we believe in equity and we want to imagine equity actualized and um and then i think that you know so kind of the current state can be very uh, disconcerting yeah. when you still see you know just how um education can mirror the have and have not society that you know it's kind of a microcosm of our larger society and so how are we as educators you know working to bridge that yeah, and what I hear there is is that equity is both like extremely large and sort of systemic, mm -hmm. and it is as specific as one child getting exactly what he or she needs. Yes. And so, how do you have both of those conversations? Yes. How do you support the macro while while still um, sort of creating the opportunities for the micro? Absolutely. So. And I, I I know there's no like I don't believe there's any silver bullet or easy right, solutions, right. right? I feel like these are that's a big question we've been grappling with since you know well before the civil rights movement. Right. Um, however, I do think teachers are part of the solution, and, mm. and that's why I just I wonder you know if we created kind of equitable working conditions and learning conditions and risk taking and reflection conditions for our teachers, how might that then serve as the model for, for what we would, could create for all kids? Love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, you I bet. Really appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.